Hey everybody, Charles from HumbleMechanic.com back today to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're talking about throttle bodies. So in addition to having a bunch of throttle bodies here to show you guys, we're actually going to also do a diagnostic demo using VAGCOM and look at a few different values of the throttle body position sensors. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is of course, Deutsch Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts, awesome service, great pricing, and a ton of great DIY videos. So check them out at shopdap.com. And as always, I'll make sure to put a link in the show notes for you guys. I actually just ordered some LED interior lighting from Deutsch Auto for my wife's Tiguan that I'm super excited to, uh, <laughs> to get installed. So be on the lookout for that DIY video as well. So as always, let's start by talking about what the heck is a throttle body. Basically, a throttle body is going to allow more air or less air into the engine. This is largely based on driver input. And what I mean by driver input is your input on the accelerator pedal. So when you mash that throttle pedal all the way down, either a cable like this one or an electronic motor like this one opens up and lets as much air as possible into the engine. When you let off the throttle, it closes and allows your vehicle to idle. Now, even on these that are cable driven, there is also some computer regulation involved and the ECM will be able to compensate for certain things like small vacuum leaks, wear on the throttle body, or even dirt built up in the throttle plate. So how does it work? Well, it really depends. On the cable driven one, again, there's a cable attached directly from the gas pedal to the throttle body. When you mash the gas, that cable pulls the throttle valve open and allows more air in. And if you, let's say, let off the throttle really quick, it'll snap it shut. On the drive-by-wire ones, it's an electronic connection instead of a mechanical connection. So you have sensors in the throttle pedal as well as in the throttle body. They're all connected to the ECM. And basically you hit the throttle, a signal sent to the ECM says, hey, open the throttle body or hey, close the throttle body. And then that action is executed by a small electronic motor. And like I mentioned, the ECM will actually change the throttle body as well. It can open or close it slightly to maintain a smooth idle, as well as open it a little bit when, let's say, you turn your air conditioner on to keep your car from stalling out. So the two main factors of control of the throttle body are the big one is driver input. And again, the ECM does play a part in controlling of the throttle body. So how do they fail? Well, as you can see, there's a lot going on in here. Basically, any of these electronic connections inside of here even inside of this one, whether it be at the plug or inside can cause a failure of the throttle valve. We can have wear. Any of these gears can wear. We can have wear of the bushing inside the throttle plate or on the motor. And the biggest factor that we see is dirt buildup inside the throttle body. And that can actually cause strain on the motor and cause the throttle body to wear faster. How do we know that we may have a bad throttle valve? Well, odds are you're gonna get a check engine light and it can read anything from idle speed regulation to failure of one of the sensors and it'll actually name one of the sensors, one of the G numbers that correlate to the sensors inside the throttle body. We can also have poor throttle response, which usually is also accompanied by a check engine light. And we may even have a noise if let's say the return spring is failing, you can get a chatter in the throttle valve. How do we diagnose these problems? Well, again, odds are you're gonna get a check engine light, so you're gonna start there. We also wanna do a really thorough visual inspection and inspect for any kind of dirt or debris inside the throttle plate that can be preventing from either opening all the way or closing all the way. And we're actually gonna take a quick look at some measured value blocks through VAGCOM and show you what that can look like. So here we are in our main screen of VAGCOM. We're gonna start by going into engine and turning on our key. Here we are in the ECM. We're gonna go into measuring value blocks and take a look at what our throttle position sensors look like. We'll start by going into measuring value block 62. Here we're gonna see the four main sensors of our throttle system. In field one, we have the G187, which is one of the throttle position sensors in the throttle body. In field two, we have G188, which is gonna be the second position sensor inside the throttle body. Then we also have the two sensors in the throttle pedal, G79 and G185. Right now, there's no input on the pedal, so basically we're sitting at idle and I have the vehicle off. If I were to press the throttle all the way to the floor, you'll notice that all the fields change. You may have also noticed that field one reading and field two reading basically inverted. 
as I let the throttle off, you can see they've about flipped. Basically what you're looking for in these two position sensors is they want a total 100. As one goes higher in percentage, the other goes lower in percentage. And that's a way that the ECM can self-check the throttle body. It's very similar with the throttle pedal position sensor as well. The thing that's a little different is one reading is twice the other. So the reading in field three is going to be twice the reading in field four. And you can see that here again, as I push the throttle all the way to the floor, field three is about twice as much as field four. Now, another really good way is if we went down to the graph function, we could watch the graph and see our measurements cross each other and look for any kind of dip or weirdness in the throttle pedal. Unfortunately, my screen capture software won't capture that, but just go down here to the graph function and you can go ahead and do that. And it's really easy to see. There's one other value that we can look at and that's measuring value block 55. This is gonna show our idle regulation. This is long-term here in field three, and field two is going to be what's happening right now. So as the throttle body wears, as it gets dirty, you'll see the long-term adaptation change, and then obviously your current adaptation is gonna change as well. And this is something that if you do take the throttle body out to clean it or just clean it, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and reset. The way to reset the throttle body or to program a brand new throttle body is go into basic setting, this is gonna be for almost all Volkswagens. If you have a Mark III or older, some cabrios, you're gonna to have to go into basic setting 98, but for most of the Volkswagens, unless it's a UDS, which is the really new stuff, we're gonna go into basic setting 60. That's gonna show our throttle adaptation. These numbers should look very familiar. It's what we've seen in measuring value block 62. You can see here the throttle body has already been adapted, but I'm gonna go ahead and adapt it anyway. And the way we do that is we just turn the basic setting on, it'll run. Now what it's doing here is it's opening and closing the throttle valve to learn the end positions. You'll see it went to okay. I'm gonna go back and I'm actually gonna do a 10 second key off cycle. That way it saves the reading in the ECM. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key back on. We're back into engine and I always like to go back and just double check and make sure we have no fault codes stored. One other thing you guys have asked me about is to show the location of some of these parts. This one's pretty different on every vehicle. The best way to find the throttle body is to trace the air intake system. So start at the air filter, trace it around. You may have some trouble with, uh, with all the engine covers on modern cars, but surely you'll be able to find it. The other thing you can do is kind of work the opposite way. Start at the cylinder head, find the intake manifold, which will be the one that doesn't go to the back of the vehicle, and trace your way forward. When you find a part that has some, looks something like this and has an electrical connection on it, you probably have found the throttle body. Now, is this a DIY? Yes, it is a DIY as far as removing the part and installing the part. The one thing that may trip you up is the need to program some of them. Like I showed you in that VAGCOM video, you do need to program a throttle body. Almost all new throttle bodies really do need to be programmed. In order to do that, you need some type of diagnostic equipment. I've also heard of guys doing like a key on and 50 presses of the gas pedal or something like that. That may or may not work. I can tell you the thing that absolutely works every time is reprogramming or doing the basic setting on the throttle body. One tip on the older ones like this one, this is I think out of an ABA, probably Cabrio or Jetta or Golf. If you're replacing the throttle body, you also wanna do a cap discharge as well. That resets the computer and gets it out of what I like to call stupid mode. Every once in a while with failures of the throttle body, even if you just take it off and clean it, you wanna do that cap discharge, which is disconnecting both leads of the battery, touching them together for about 10 seconds that reboots the computer and makes it learn the new positions of the throttle body. Again, you'll still need VAGCOM or something to reset that basic setting, but I've seen guys replace throttle bodies and uh, not do that and then still have issues with either idle speed regulation or again, the fault calling out that specific G code. But other than that, this is probably the trickiest ones, the ones that you'll have the most problems with. This one is out of some newer uh, fully electric vehicle. I'm not really sure. I'm pretty sure this one's out of a TSI or an FSI engine. These are pretty much plug and play after you do the basic setting. No special, uh, special needs on any of these. 
All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw the thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. And I don't have a beer.